contour system, uh, carefully designed, will almost handle every, even this really sensitive areas. You could, you can, you might have to at your discharge points between each contour, try and put a bit of hay down, get it grassed first. The rest will automatically happen. Yeah. Yeah. Which is way and a half now here, but it's easy. It could be in the streets. Now, with your size of your contour yeah. and the profile of them, I've got to say, at that, in that event, virtually no water leaves. You say your contours have got to hold a reasonable amount of water, and then the spacing right. of them right. is increased. So, you know, there's plenty of people can give you the exact, you know, uh, <coughs> perspective. Uh, the structure, the profile, the profile is what I'm talking about. Thank you very much, boss. Give you the profile, it'll hold the water at the level you want it so that you want two inches, two inches most landscapes will take. And then uh, the benefit of having a contour system in you can guarantee to hold two inches without having yep. any damage. Yep. But the next thing is when you're going through a cycle where you're going to get eight inches, you probably need to be able to drain your contours. And I often recommend it because you just put a pipe in them at the bottom of your storage area down to the next one. And so you let that trickle out you know, slowly. Mm. And instead of having water there for, you know, making it go a bit sour, you can let it out. But you know, it will only be one year and plenty you do that. But the cost of the pipe's not very much either. Yep. You just simply put them in and bury them. You don't have to dig in and size them in. But uh, that's it. Once the ground cover, if we, we step over the, on the floor that way and it gets e exactly the same amount of runoff, if not more. Yeah. But once the ground cover is there, it's just, you know, bouncing off each yeah, bush, yeah. bubble clump and it's, you know, everything's, yeah, it just slows it down so much that it's just exposed here. Yeah. The only other yeah. thing that I've seen done on slightly heavier soil, uh, country that grew probably more Ben D than Lanswood, uh, the bloke did, with a little tractor and a bucket, he did what I call prairie dog farms. You know, you see the old, on TV, you see the prairie dogs and they've got their lemon little all their burrows. Mm. Well, Raymond just went along with the bucket and took out about two buckets and he'd go along another five feet and take out another two buckets and then and drop a seed in each divot. Mm. And boy, gee, that's broken it up and stopped the water running. Because mm. if he goes along there and there's a one there and one there, then the next time there's one there. Sort of so what runs past the first one goes into the next one. And that's steady to the lot too. It's the same principle, the contours are a hell of a lot cheaper if you've got a, the right equipment to put them in. Because you're putting it up and he's digging it out. Well, it's not that each one is a, is a, is a new unit. The, the contour can cover yep. a management strategy and you can use it to, to manage over the next 20 or 30 years. Whereas those, you, you've either got to rebuild them, but you don't have to, you don't have to sort of keep reorganising them. Yep. And the second thing is you can't go and drain all them out if you get a really wet year, so then you can overload it with water, whereas a contour system you can drain it. So it's, you know, we had a cracking system which once sort of replaced the water between, in, e in each rain event, exactly what was needed. And I think in some ways we've got to get as close to that as we would try and rebuild as we can. And, you know, that's about the only one. Every time you rip it or something like that, you can, the same as... He's had the problem here. The rain doesn't do the right thing by here. The result can be the opposite of what you hope. Mm -hmm. But with a contour system, you can always adjust it. That's right. Some of this, you take this dirt out here. You don't only replace this because I've made a hole. It's not very good this time. But it, I would usually dig it out and use it to build this bank, you see? The reason you go upstream is to get the level somewhere up, this, up along the... Ridge, you're not dealing with much more than a 10 centimetre variation. So, at this piece, you're going to have to look after in terms of flow pattern. Then you start another one. You know, probably in this, you'll have to have four or five from here to the end down to get it back to stabilise. And these will hold ponding water, it'll run over like that. Then you've got another one, and probably you'd offset it a little bit. You haven't got a lot of that. No, well, it's, it's moving, yeah, that's right. But you wouldn't be worrying. See, this will stop all the topsoil moving um, because you, you you build the middle of your bank preferably out of, out of clay. Yeah. So 
So you go down into the clay on the downside. What will happen is as soon as it rains it will run the fertility out of the topsoil onto the clay and you'll get vegetation starting almost straight away on the downside.